So if the Russian church is correct about this, this is the city gate from the time of Jesus and the very gate from which, he, from which Jesus was taken out of the city to the site of his execution. And indeed, right behind me, the camera, is the church of the Holy Sepulcher. This very little known site right next to it actually holds very interesting archaeological discoveries, but does it really relate to the time of Jesus and to the events recorded by the Gospels? Let's check it out. So hello and welcome to another vlog by Danny the Digger. And this time, I am at a church called Alexander Nevsky. It is a church that is located right next to the famous Church of the Holy Sepulchre, to the famous site that marks where Jesus was put to death, died, buried, came back from the dead by Christian faith. And yet in 1857, the Russian church purchases the plot right to the east of it, and in the 1880s, it starts excavating it, and among others, they make the discovery of this structure. This structure is undoubtedly from Roman times. It has this semi-engaged Corinthian capital, same thing over here, and there's definitely an arch that is tempting to identify, uh, to be identified as the city gate. But is it indeed so? First of all, when you look at it, it doesn't really look like a city gate, more like an ornamented passageway. And furthermore, there is a column here with a cross. Now, with all the excitement, I don't think there were crosses in the first century used by anyone. I mean, Jesus was not even crucified when this gate was claiming to be the gate through which he passed on his way to his own crucifixion. Okay, but this is now the interior of it, and discovering this in the 1880s, a massive structure which looks like a, com a combining an ornamented entrance as well as a small one over here, it was suggested that maybe this all relates to the gate and the walls of Jerusalem in the time of Jesus and the way he was taken out to his execution. Here is a, even a map that is showing the supposed path that he took, passing next to this building, which we're going to see in a minute, then walking by here, and the ornamented passageway is like right next to it. But what is it really? Does it really all date to the first century? And if you think this is confusing, wait till you see this building. This building found right next to it looks strikingly similar to the Western Wall. Look at these big stones with the edges marked in a specific way, what's called a boss, which is so typical to Herodian construction. And you also have here a certain section that is like jutting out, which is also typical to the upper parts of the Western Wall. In fact, this angled section did appear on the upper part of the Western Wall and can be seen to this day in the upper part of the Tomb of the Patriarchs, which is said to be also from the time of Herod, to be another Herodian construction. What is this building? And how can it be connected to the gate? How can it be connected to the events recorded by the Gospels? Let's see first all of the evidence, because you see that the building is also present here. This is all clearly part. Wait, let me zoom out so you see this. It's all part of the same monumental structure. And yet its date <laughs> is one big question. So when this was discovered, it was suggested to link it to the city gates and the city walls. But I'm sorry, it's not a wall. It is part of a structure. And later scholars suggested to link it actually to the Constantinian Holy Sepulcher, the first church built to commemorate where Jesus was put to death and crucified. Later, scholars like Dan Baat said, no, this should really be labeled as part of the pagan temple that used to stand 
in over the place of the tomb of Jesus. This is recorded by Eusebius, by St. Jerome, as the Romans wanted to defile and to erase the location of the tomb of Jesus, they made a pagan temple over it. Well, as a guy who always dealt with ancient coins, I must say I find that theory a bit problematic because none of the Jerusalem coins ever present a temple, a temple to a goddess in Jerusalem. So maybe it's just a certain literary form that Eusebius and St. Jerome used. Was there really a Roman temple at this location? It is still, let's say, a matter of scholarly debate. So if it's not Constantinian, if it's not Roman Ilia Capitolina times, if it's not city walls, what is it? You know what? I think we sometimes need to agree that we just don't know everything. We just cannot answer it. I personally believe this is some public building from the time of King Herod that was built here to mark something. Maybe it's part of the, I don't know, Praetorium, Herod's palace, some one of his buildings. We just don't know. Okay, but it gets more interesting because you also have here over the fence, and I don't know if I can really pass over here, but there are actually some interesting finds that were made here as well, attesting that in the late Roman period, the main avenue used to pass right here. This is all parts of the Cardo Maximus. Let me see if the light helps a bit. Yeah, it actually does. And there are traces of the columns that used to be placed here, indicating that centuries later, a main avenue used to pass here. That does indeed tempt to suggest, hey, maybe this is part of the Constantinian Basilica that we know that it was linked to the Cardo Maximus, except that the style of this stones, of this construction, in my opinion, just doesn't match. I do like, however, the tour guides bringing uh, some of their people here and claiming this is the city gate and this was a little a little passage for which you can enter the city if the city gate was closed. And they like presenting it to their tourists as um, um, a physical part of the city that Jesus actually referred to in one of his famous parables saying that, I hope I'm quoting it properly, that uh, it is easier for a camel to pass through the hole of the needle than the rich men to enter the kingdom of heaven. They say that this little entrance was actually nicknamed as the eye of the needle, and this is what Jesus was really pointing to. A camel couldn't really pass here, nor could a rich man that is maybe obese from all his wealth and good food. But let's see, you know what? Could I make it? <laughs> okay, I guess I'm worthy of kingdom of heaven. And this is all we can say about the archaeology, about this puzzling site. I personally believe that the city walls are still waiting to be discovered. They do have to be somewhere around here, and I will prove it when I make the most important chapter in this vlog about the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which, in my humble opinion, is indeed at the right location. I will show the evidence here, the overwhelming evidence, that leads me to believe that it is at the right location. But I'm not using any myths, any miracles. I'm just analyzing the site archaeologically and through comparative analysis and rational uh, analysis, uh, you'll see my conclusion over it. It is still worth presenting the minor items that are presented here. First of all, the church today is in such good condition about 10 years ago the Russian church did renovate it. It's got this big um, big mural from the 1960s that is depicting Jesus taken out of the city gate, as they believe, and carried towards the site of his execution. The Golgotha is there in the distance. In addition to it, you have here something very important for the Russian church, a big piece of the Golgotha. In 1837, there was a pretty big earthquake 
And the Russian church bought this chunk of the Golgotha that supposedly fell apart and brought it over here. I must say that if you look at it from a very specific angle, I hope the camera catches this, it does look quite mystical. Wait, let me prove my angle. Here we go. Okay, nowadays you have this Russian church with Russian imagery and text to mark this is part of the original Golgotha on which Jesus was crucified. And look at this divine sunlight coming from above. That is very special. Furthermore, going over here and entering the main hall of the Russian church today. Wait, let me switch cameras here. This church also presents a good amount of uh, Russian icons, of which I admit I don't know much about. I don't know necessarily what they pre represent, but when I see Russian pilgrims come here, they're always very excited kissing those icons. Here we go. You can see candles that were recently lit here. And these icons always get the attention of the Russian pilgrim groups who come to visit this site. My favorite part of this church is the imagery on the top. A beautiful set of paintings made in the 19th century by a Russian artist. I hope I'm saying his name properly, Koshelev, who has depicted the events Jesus witnesses from the Rock of Agony at Gethsemane, finding the disciples asleep, being captured, taken by the priests, interrogated, taken to Pilatus, sentenced to death, and then here is the crucifixion, the passion of Christ preparing the body for burial, the burial itself. And notice how the artist properly depicted the shape of the tomb as I'm going to show when I film in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And this is already the scene from the following Sunday. The angel explains to them why the tomb is empty. Kyrios aneste, the Lord has risen. But the, it's the style of this artwork, so classic. They should really be put in a museum, not just here in this beautiful church. So I hope I've done justice both to the artists and to the site. And I welcome you all to visit this special place. Of course, the next chapter is going to review the big complex behind this wall. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The place that says it is the place of the crucifixion of the death, of the burial, and the resurrection. A site that is venerated since the fourth century with a giant church built over it, connected to the main avenue of Jerusalem at the time. Today, it is a heavily modified church, mostly from the time of the Crusaders, that is still reflecting medieval and Byzantine architecture and also operated by several denominations. Let me just take you to the entrance. Find those ladies, sorry. <laughs> to show you how they are connected. Okay, Nevsky Church, right here. Alexander Nevsky, by the way, was a Russian hero when in the 13th century he managed to hold against a combined German-Swedish attempt to invade Russia. That's all I know about that event and about that figure. But uh, becoming a, a hero, he's a well-venerated figure in Russian history and Russian church. And in Russia, there are also quite a few institutions and uh, Christian institutions also named after him. But connecting the site to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, here we are passing through these 
many souvenir shops. The tourists are back, by the way. Yes, they're open because tour groups have begun to show up. Here is a sign indicating we are about to enter the Holy Sepulchre. Here we go. I'm not going to enter it. That will be in a separate video. I'm just showing you here the entrance to, to demonstrate how it is connected to the Nevsky Church and the claim that Nevsky Church holds the second wall, therefore making this site indeed external. But even if archaeology did not prove it, I do believe that this site was external. Hold on, let me switch the camera. Just a second. I do believe that this site is indeed outside the city because of the archaeological items that we will review inside. There is overwhelming evidence suggesting that in the time of Jesus, this site was indeed external. So stay tuned for my next chapter. And of course, hit like and hit subscribe if you want to follow and get more of this interesting presentations about archaeology relating to Jesus and following Jesus in Jerusalem. Until then, thank you all and God bless you. Be taught. Okay,